Cambridge Insider Podcast time again. I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited. Stephen Fanica, your host, all the way from this morning, a snowy New Jersey. Can you believe it? Early in the season, I feel like it's not supposed to snow. Craig Batson, is it snowing in Seattle? It is not, Stephen. It's actually a gorgeous, sunny day here in Seattle. I guess that's a balmy 58 in uh, in Seattle. I feel like that's a British word, balmy. <laughs> uh, aren't no. all English words British words? I mean, if you want to get technical about it, probably. I feel like I say this every time we have a guest on, but like today I'm legitimately over the moon excited about our guest. Are you excited? I, I, absolutely. She is one of my favorite people in the Boston office at Cambridge Network. Um, a true delight and always fun to talk to just because you never know what's going to happen. An absolute superstar. All the way from Boston, Lauren Solo, how are you? I'm doing good, Stephen. It's snowy here too, so I'm unlike Craig. I'm also enjoying this, you know, early snow weather. We'll have a we'll have a snowman conversation at some stage on this podcast. We'll invite you back. Craig doesn't know what snow is. He's from Seattle, but we'll have a snowman talk and maybe even a snowman competition. We post some photos somewhere. People can go have a look at the snowman. Lauren, I feel like I could introduce you. You're a program manager, but I feel like you should probably introduce yourself for our listeners because you're going to do a way better job than I am. Is that okay? Sure, whatever whatever works. So um, my name's Lauren Savo. I'm based out of our Waltham slash Boston office. Um, I've been with Cambridge for uh, close to six years now. Can you guys believe that? That's pretty... That's pretty insane. long. Um, but I've been in international education for a long time. Uh, prior to working at Cambridge, I was teaching English in China. I've lived in China. I studied in China. I do speak Chinese. Um, yeah, and I'm excited to be with Craig and Stephen today. They're a fun group. And so I you think it will be entertaining. You shouldn't give us too many compliments. Some of us, it just goes straight to our heads. We lose track of what we should be doing. Um, that was a very good intro. I would have not said half of what you said. So listen, welcome to the podcast. It's an absolute honor to have you. Yeah, You are currently heading up the Cambridge Committee that is looking into SEVP regulations and student visa status, which is why we have you, because you have expertise that we clearly do not. I mean, that's most of the time though, right, Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> well, banter. well, with that in mind, I'm going to hand over to Craig. He's got a few questions for you. Enlighten us, please. Oh, yeah, sure so Thanks, Stephen. Thank you for joining us today, Lauren. Um, it's also nice to have another Mandarin speaker on the podcast because Dean, Lauren, and myself speak Mandarin and Stephen does not. So the more of us will eventually take over the pod and it'll be in Chinese eventually. You give him um, the microphone and he just throws you under the bus. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Um, so, and I think that that relates to why we had you on because you really do understand what's going on in china right now and we had uh, sasha our salesperson on from shanghai and she talked about a lot of what china looks like right now for the average person everything's open uh restaurants are open you know uh, stores are open you can go anywhere they're having concerts uh, taiwan held a rock festival um but for the status for u.s embassies what's going on with them lauren so that's actually a fantastic um, question, Craig. So we are still definitely seeing a severe drought or lack of um, visa interview slots for 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 students or really for anyone. Um, I would say kind of across the board, according to the U.S. Department of State, just you know, China and other countries as well, routine visa services are being suspended, um, and we're seeing that really continue to play out in China. Um, and even when visa interviews are available or we have students who think they have a visa interview scheduled, uh, a lot of times those slots end up getting canceled a week before. We actually just got information in from one of our colleagues who um, has been looking into this closely and she's she's actually my source behind the scenes for a lot of information, but um, she let she let me know that 
you know, interviews that were supposed to be scheduled for the, um, excuse me, October 19th through today were, were canceled. So it's just, it's been really tough to even hold on to an interview when you have it in place. And then I think uh, another important thing to note is that certain, it's very uh, consulate or embassy dependent as well. So for example, currently Beijing actually has no availability. So good luck if you're there, <laughs> you, you can't get in. Um, so, um, and then for Chengdu, the embassy is, is currently closed um, just in general. So that option isn't even available to Chinese nationals. So um, I would say currently in terms of other offices, uh, the earliest availability would be in Shenyang um, in, in early January. And then otherwise for Guangzhou, Shanghai, you're looking at March. So, so that's, that's where we stand. That's not great, obviously. Um, and if, if listeners have been listening to the podcast and they listen to our conversation with Sasha, that a lot of families right now that are interested in coming to study in America, they want to do it, but they're not willing to commit until they know when they can get a visa, right? I think that uh, that totally makes sense. You know, they're looking into other options, other countries, domestic, uh, domestic schools. Why, why do you think this is significant, Lauren? Is, and how does it impact Cambridge Network's international students? So I think it's it's significant for a few different reasons. I think kind of similar to what you were mentioning, parents are really reconsidering their plans. You know, I think it doesn't mean that they're completely abandoning on their plan to study abroad, like you mentioned, which I think is definitely a positive sign. But, you know, it definitely is making them reconsider the spring semester as a start time for their child because the, their ch children won't be able to get visas in time to actually start. So I think we're going to see, my my guess, my opinion is that we're going to see probably um, uh, families selecting to defer till fall instead of spring. If they were looking at spring intake, you know, I think we'll start, we'll probably start seeing that trend. Um, and I think the other thing is it's just you know, think about how many barriers these families are facing right now. You know, it's not just the the visa is one piece of it. Uh, the travel piece is another. You know, I mean, we still have, um, you know, direction in place from the United States government here that, you know, not, people from China, um, you know, under certain visa types, in, including F one visa F one student visa holders, actually, um, you know, are, are under the travel restriction. Um, and, so. I, and I think it's and I think it's important to note it's we, we call it on the podcast. It's not a travel restriction from China. It is a ban on people entering the United States who have been in China in the last 14 days as Chinese citizens. I think it's important to note what it is because that helps add clarity. All of our Chinese students know that it's a travel ban. Uh, most of our schools know we want to clear up that amb ambiguity. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, you know, it just it, it just makes it hard for a lot of, it, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, between that and the visa restrictions, it's just kind of like it's so many hurdles, you know, to overcome a, as a student or as a parent. And it's just, you know, parents obviously want the best and want safety for their kids. And so if they can avoid having to, you know, put their child through that and like wait a few more months, I think they'll do that. And that's definitely what, what we're starting to see. And then I think that's good to know for our schools, um, because if you're not going to be able to get students into the country, uh, you need to especially continue looking at what kind of distance learning you're going to be able to offer the students that are attending your schools or that can't enter the United States, or maybe can you promote your distance learning to potential applicants? Um, because especially as a lot of our schools are looking to go back in person, uh, thank goodness, uh, we need to be able to see what we can offer to our international students. Absolutely, and, Craig. And so for the last question, Lauren, how do you see this developing in coming months? Are, are, are there changes on the horizon? I think, you know, to be you know, very honest with you, I think kind of what we see pl 
play out in terms of the presidential election, the upcoming presidential election will have a, a very um, intense impact on this because I think a lot of these regulations that we do have in place are in place d- uh, due to the current administration. So, you know, depending on what happens, we could see things um, change. We could see that travel ban be lifted. You know, that is a possibility because it is something that the president has control over and has the power over. If you kind of like read through the proclamation language and the terms that are set in place, it, you know, that's who determines it. So, you know, I think, you know, next week is actually going to be really important. Um, And kind of along those lines, I think that's definitely a factor that our parents and students are looking at too. You know, I think they're very curious to see, okay, what happens in this next election? And, you know, does it make it easier? Does it make it more comfortable? Does it make it better for me to to send my child or, you know, if I am the child to to go to the U.S.? Um, is that an, more of an option for me now? Absolutely. I, I, I was on a, um, a series of interviews with potential students this morning, and a lot of them, um, a lot of them actually were pointing to the fact that there was, uh, you know, just uncertainty in the market at the stage when we go from the election that's coming up, but also the handling of the pandemic. Where does that go to in the future and how does that impact both the embassies, um, you know, and and people that are working in the embassies in China, but, um, you know, in the US as well for students to be able to to get here. I must say, and I must just give kudos here to to, to Lauren. Number one, you're so much smarter than than, um, than the two hosts on this podcast. It's it's actually ridiculous, but I think it does. I think it does allow us to shine a little bit. I must also give you kudos for the pronunciation of the Chinese cities because Craig and I butcher those on a weekly basis and you can just see that you've lived there and taught English there for quite some time because your pronunciation was spectacular. Well, thank you, Stephen. I I appreciate it. And you guys are smart cookies. Don't sell yourself short, guys. <laughs> you know, I, I feel think like you, you have to say this. You adding the word cookies there, I think, explains everything. <laughs> Lauren, we really appreciate you being on the podcast. Any final thoughts from your side, uh, just on the topic today or or just in general, anything you want to share with our listeners? You know, I think just, I would say, you know, I know a lot of people are probably saying this, but I think we just, you know, we have to stay strong. We have to stay um, focused on kind of the road ahead. It's not going to be an easy recruitment season, you know, particularly to our school partners, but I think, you know, we we can still do it and we just have to be creative and find new ways and find new strategies. And um, I am hopeful that, you know, we'll, we'll see some positive changes and, you know, hopefully that there's less barriers for our students. I think we all want that, you know, we want them to be able to travel here and feel welcomed here and, you know, feel like they're part of our communities. Um, And that's, you know, part of the reason why I'm in international education. I really believe in that. And I think a lot of our, our listeners and um, other colleagues at Cambridge believe that too. So, you know, that's that's what we want. Yeah. Excellent. Well said. Well said. Now that we've got the serious business out the way, I did promise one of my other colleagues that I would ask you this question. Sure. Um, and yeah, it just wouldn't feel right if I didn't ask this question. So for those of you that don't know, Halloween is this weekend. Um, a lot of sweets, a lot of candy, uh, a lot of kids walking the streets. Lauren told us uh, an exceptional story about her Halloween experience. I believe this was last year, Lauren. Yes, this was this was last year. So to be honest, like I'm not a huge like Halloween person. I I didn't dress up and on purpose because like I was kind of afraid of the trick or treaters. I don't know why. I was just kind of afraid of them. <laughs> so I purposefully like left my where I live you know, so that way I wouldn't have like an awkward run in with these trick or treaters and went on a walk. And I do like walking in my neighborhood. That's an aside. But so I'm walking (laughs) through my neighborhood (laughs) and I'm not a very big person. Like, I guess people don't who are, um, you know, listening in. It's it's an audio medium. They do um, not know what they don't like. like, They don't know what I look like. So I'm I'm five foot tall. So I'm not a very tall person. And so this woman, like I'm just walking down the street and she just like shouts out like, like, hi dear happy halloween like do you want some candy (laughs) and um i got mistaken for a child a a trick-or-treater like a young trick-or-treater so that was the highlight of my halloween last year yeah 
It's an excellent story. I love it. I love it. You must always you must always be careful around hollow Halloween time. You must also always be careful on airline that they don't offer you one of those kiddie packages where you get like little co- coloring in, uh, you know, pens, pens and pencils, a little crossword to do, you know. That's that's a great point. Lauren, next time we fly on a plane together, I'm going to say that you're my daughter because I've always wanted to see inside of a cockpit and we can ask. Excuse well, me. You know, nope. to be honest, guys, I think my plug for short people on planes is like a lot of times it's really hard to reach the overhead bins and sometimes people don't help you and you're struggling. You're trying to lift that carry on (laughs) and no one comes and helps you. And then it's like falling on you. So like be a good person, help out somebody who can't reach the the overhead bin. That's like one of my battles in life. And you know, that is a, that is a delightful reminder, Lauren. Yeah. Be a good person. All of our listeners, we hope you're <laughs> you guys are good people. And if you're on a if you're on a 13 hour flight from China and a very small lady comes up to you and curses you for not helping her out, you might have met Lauren Sol. We don't know. <laughs> We're gonna need an entire Cambridge Network after dark podcast to just dive into this. Uh, I mean, we have stories of Steven on what was that time you were on the airplane for uh, 16 hours it turned around halfway through. Do you remember that one? I mean, I purposely blocked it up, but thank you for the reminder. <laughs> it's awful. Lauren Savo, absolute pleasure. We appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. My buddy in Seattle, Mr. Craig Betson, any final thoughts? You know, um, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we are up on iTunes, Spotify, everywhere. If you are an iTunes listener, I know it's cheesy for me to say, but please uh, rate, review us. It really helps uh, us spread the good word. And then on anchor.fm forward slash Cambridge Network, you can send us a voicemail. We're going to be trying to answer uh, listener questions, keeping everybody engaged. So if you have any questions, send them to us. We'll cover them in a pod. I mean, we just launched. So, you know, we have plenty of time to, to be answered. Somebody, you guys can be the first listeners questions. Absolutely. And to those of you that have subscribed, reviewed, rated, we appreciate every single one of you. For those of you that are celebrating Halloween, Lauren excluded in that list. Enjoy it, be safe, um, and have a fantastic weekend ahead. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.